I've known a lot of producers who quit making beats, a lot of talented producers who just stopped. Matter of fact, I know a ton of musicians in general who just stopped making music. A lot of the times it was a matter of them realizing the music business just wasn't for them because to have a successful music career, generally that's going to take a ton of work. You basically become an entrepreneur and realistically, if you look at your circle of friends, most people have jobs, they're employees, they're not people who went out and started small businesses themselves because that's just not for everybody. But I used to hate that. I used to, I used to really resent all the talented people around me who weren't pursuing music music professionally and then I grew up and I realized that was really unfair of me to judge all those folks who just for whatever reason chose not to pursue music as a career you know how many groups I was in with people that would just frustrate me endlessly you know some of them just weren't ready some of them had a lot of other stuff going on for example I was in a group with a guy who um, basically quit making music after we cast a check from Sprite because they used some of our songs in the, the big Drake campaign maybe 12 years ago he was also a drug addict that's an incredibly tragic story and reflecting back on that I was upset that he chose drugs I was upset at a lot of things and it's just not my right or responsibility to impose all of my expectations anger frustration on him for choosing to live his life the way he chose to live his life here's a better story i remember there's this guy producer made great beats he chose more traditional employment and focusing on his family over pursuing music as a career he told me he was like you're living the life that all of us want to live and i looked at him and i was like wait a minute you have this amazing marriage you and your wife are still in love after all these years you've raised a couple kids and as of very recently back then they they owned a house but now i think they built a house for themselves so i said you have the life that we all want to live look at what you have every time we talk he, he brings that conversation up and says that really stuck with me so i tweeted about that i said some of the most talented beat makers singers rappers and songwriters just don't want to pursue music for a living that's fine it's frustrating to watch but none of us can force them to want to be a professional musician and none of us can force them to go through that whole process. I thought that was a pretty uncontroversial tweet. I mean, I got a lot of replies from people saying, yeah, you're right, that's me, that's my experience. You know, the first reply here is from, I don't know who taught my cats how to unplug things, but I'm upset with them. The first reply is from Jarrell. I hope I'm saying their name correctly. If not, we follow each other. I'm going to catch hell. They said, yeah, one of the best singers I ever heard said, I love to sing, but it's just for family, friends, and Jesus and continue working a desk job. My tweet is saying this not only happens, but it's fine when it happens. And no one was upset at that tweet. No one was angry because why? How could you be angry? At well, I was really curious to know what privilege she was referring to, because look, I I'm not going to deny that I have privilege. I've I grew up with two parents. I'm white passing. I'm a heterosexual male. And in fact, the privilege that apparently I have is that I have an idea that artists are choosing not to make a living off of music when I know how saturated the market is and how statistically on. OK, so it's just bullshit. I mean, look, I, I don't know how you can argue against the fact that some artists actually made the choice not to pursue music as a career. To me, if you're a producer and, and you stop suddenly one day loving the process of making beats, it's not serving you. It's not making you a living. It's not making you happy. It's not fulfilling you. And you want to quit. I think that's absolutely the right time to do it. Or if it's just a decision that you made based on practicality you know you have other financial goals that outweigh your desire to pursue music as a living because it's hard i never in a million years say it's not hard i still struggle with it go ahead and quit i, I think that's fine my thing is just be at peace with it if, if you're making that choice for yourself be at peace with making that choice i fully planned on quitting making beats many many years ago when i first graduated and got my teaching degree because i knew becoming a teacher full-time would not give me 
me time to make music and music wasn't paying a single one of my damn bills. I had already invested tens of thousands of dollars and years of my life in school getting this degree. I was going to use it. But then something kind of tugged at, at my heart a little. I decided to give myself a year to see if I could actually make it in music. And after that year, I told myself I would quit if nothing happened. And something happened. I, I got a number one record. So I've stuck with music. But I understand wanting to quit. I was ready to quit because that was a practical decision based on the lifestyle I wanted to lead. What I found in this conversation, unfortunately, was that a lot of people aren't at peace with this decision. They're struggling with it. And instead of just coming out and saying, you know what, I quit making beats because I was scared of pursuing it full time. I didn't I didn't think it was going to be possible for me to make it. And it sucks. I'm not happy about it, but that's what I did. Or instead of saying, you know what? I chose other things. I had other priorities and I just never really figured it out. So I quit. People tended to lash out at not just me, but any musician who's making music for a living. So again, what I found was that the people who responded negatively to my tweet insulted the folks making music for a living. They couldn't just say, you know what? Yeah, some people quit that's fine. They had to take a shot at those of us who are doing this for a living, which I think says a lot about them and whether or not they're at peace with their own decision to not make music or whether they're struggling and they're frustrated with the status of their own music careers and they're lashing out. This is just my opinion based on the way they're talking. What I got from this tweet is that he's saying people who quit making music are smart because music is not a solid career. It's always going to be short term and it's always going to be a roller coaster ride. This is an opinion that that was common as well. Um, it's a demoralizing industry and takes so much sacrifice, patience and de dedication. There's a lot to unpack there. Uh, does it take a lot of sacrifice, passion? Does it take a lot of dedication, sacrifice, and patience? Absolutely. So does going to law school. So did, so did becoming a teacher. So does going to medical school. So does becoming an electrician. So does becoming a personal trainer. But also there's this narrative that the music business is just awful. And that when you choose to quit making music or pursuing music as a career, it's the right choice because the music business is awful. It's miserable. You sell your soul. You become a Satanist. You have to have sex with Quincy Jones whatever the Illuminati conspiracies are. And then on the other hand, you can choose a traditional nine to five and be happy and have stability. And I thought that stability narrative died when COVID hit and people got laid off left and right. And we saw how unstable these so-called stable jobs actually were. Let's look at what the most depressing careers actually are. This is just a CBS News article. Nursing home and child care workers, absolutely. I can see how that could be a really tough job. Food service staff, absolutely. Social workers, oh my God. Health care workers, when I think of what nurses go through, they're work the nurses I know are working 80 hours a week. They're getting COVID every other month. They got to do a ton of work. They're, they're messing their backs up, lifting up these big ass patients all the time. They don't get paid enough. They don't get respected enough. Back to my privilege, when I consider all the other jobs that I could have, I do feel privileged being a music producer. As awful as people may think the music business actually is, I work for myself, set my own schedule. Yes, I choose to work all damn day, but that's my choice. I don't I don't have to clean feces. If I'm sick, I, you know, I don't have to worry about getting fired for calling in. But to be fair, artists, entertainers, and writers, I don't know whether they're all grouped in the same category, are listed as depressing careers. They say 9% reported an episode of major depression. That Sure, I believe that. Um, teachers, that's what I wanted to become. Administrative support staff. There's one that surprised me. Your financial advisors and accountants. That's supposed to be a stable job. And, and okay, so they're also struggling. My point is a lot of people believe that pursuing a music career is a terrible idea because being a career musician is awful and depressing. And in reality, there are other jobs that we don't consider awful or depressing or bad career choices that in fact are just as, as potentially volatile or far worse, far more dangerous. There are more occupational hazards. There's a higher incidence of depression. There are the people, I, it, look, I'm not going to judge this perspective, but I don't understand it. I personally don't like having my art have the pressure of paying bills. It's boring. I think it's amazing. But again, look, I love it. He doesn't. 
I can't think of a better way to pay my bills than doing something fun that I've loved doing that I would do for free if I had a day job. It goes back to what I'm saying. I'm not going to judge the man for that. It's it's his choice. It's fine. I, I noticed one other thing about the people that left angry replies to this tweet and it wasn't just that it was incredibly difficult to even find their music which leads me to believe that they're not necessarily pursuing music in a not trying to offend anyone in a smart educated way a lot of people will drop a song or two every year and that's the extent of their entire marketing and branding effort and they're like damn why am i not famous this, this industry is rigged everybody who's on is probably sucking devil dick just to see i clicked on a lot of these people's profiles and they didn't even have music links in their bio i don't make the news i just report on it like this guy who's really upset when you click on his profile there's really not any indication that he even makes music there's a lot of this like weird creepy old man shit though uh-huh <laughs> oh wow <laughs> i'm sorry this is me let me stop but I'll, I'll end on this one and this was particularly volatile it's not that we don't want to pursue music it's talented motherfuckers <sighs> I'm trying to cuss less. This guy just has to cuss in all caps. But you know what? You can read it. Basically, they're saying that other people being talentless somehow forces them to not pursue music for a living even though they want to not something i would personally brag about but however my point is this then they follow up their reply you will multi-platinum motherfucker acting like you can't analyze the game use common sense they call me illiterate even though they fix their fingers to compose this fine work of english literature my point is this something that they have in common with the white passing lady who claimed i had a ton of privilege and therefore my tweet was an attack on her they have in common volatility right out of the gate they're cussing they're typing in all caps they're making accusations they're placing blame they're using insulting language i think there's something to be said about this because they're doing this all publicly in a space in which the music ecosystem exists in a very real way you know we're all interacting with each other i've forged friendships with people with whom i had disagreements online because they were respectful disagreements if you come out the gate talking about you motherfucker this and you don't know shit that that's not the greatest foundation foundation for networking and people see that all i'm saying is working in the music business which is a small business matter of fact just being a professional in general requires having a pretty good reputation if your reputation is that you can't work very well with others that you can't be challenged that you can't respectfully disagree with people in a professional capacity you're going to be offered fewer and fewer opportunities i would hypothesize that a lot of the people who are reacting so negatively and so poorly to this particular tweet could have behaved that way with promoters or fellow artists or managers or journalists or people with whom they could have networked and gotten opportunities and, and built their brands up and found more success in the music business. I'm not saying that's what happened. These people just might be jerks on Twitter. But in reality, they're some of the nicest, most loyal friends, some of the most talented musicians on the planet. I have no idea. I just think as a policy, when you're interacting with people, especially publicly, but privately as well, even if you disagree with them, cussing someone out right out the gate, probably not going to lead to desirable results. Unless you're talking to an airline employee, then it doesn't matter. But again, if, if you want to pursue music, I think that's great. If you don't want to pursue music, that's great too. I just hope that whatever choices you make in life, you're at peace with those decisions and that you find fulfillment in whatever path you choose. And thank you for watching my videos. Peace.